Hey everyone, welcome back to Instrumentation Lectures. So far in this series, we have covered the basics of measurement like what is measurement, the different methods of measurement, then classification of instruments, their static and dynamic characteristics, followed by errors in measurement and how to deal with them. From this video onwards, we are moving to a new topic, measurement of resistance, capacitance and inductance. In this video and in the next few ones, we will be talking about different methods for measurement of resistances. After that, we will move to measurement of capacitance and inductance. So let's start our lecture. Resistance is described in several ways. For instance, it is described as the restriction of flow of electrons. It is also described as a difficulty in moving electric current through a conductor to which a voltage is applied. Now, a circuit element that implements electric resistance is called a resistor. However, a more appropriate description for resistance is that it is the property of a conductor which determines the current produced by a given difference of potential. This makes us remember that a resistor is a conductor first. So, Keep in mind that all conductors are resistive and resistors are used in circuits to regulate the strength of currents either by reducing the diameter of conductors or by introducing more obstacles. Since resistors are extensively used in electric and electronic fields, it is important to make high quality resistors. There are several qualities or properties which are ideally needed for a good resistor. They are stability or permanence with time. This means that the value of resistance should not vary with time. Next property is that small temperature coefficient. This is needed because the value of resistance should not vary much with changes in temperature. Then we have low thermoelectric EMF with copper. Uh, as a side note, let me first teach you what is a thermoelectric effect. When two dissimilar metals like iron and copper are joined at both ends to form a closed circuit and one of the junction is at a higher temperature than the other, then a current is set up in the circuit. The EMF driving this current is called thermoelectric EMF. And this phenomenon is known as thermoelectric effect. So, here it says that a good resistor should have a low thermoelectric EMF with copper as copper is the metal we use in connecting wires. Next, a resistor should have high resistivity. We know the equation R equal to rho L by A where rho is called resistivity. So, as you can see, if the value of rho is high, then R is also high even if the value of L and A are small. Therefore, high resistivity is required to make the size of resistor small. Now, the material we use to make resistors should have resistance to oxidation, corrosion and moisture. And finally, resistors should have a robust and ease construction and should be cheap. Now keep in mind that no single material possess all these mentioned properties. Therefore, we select the material which is best suited for our needs. Some commonly used materials for resistors are manganin, constantin, nickel and chromium alloys and gold and chromium alloys. Ok now based on the magnitude of resistances, resistors are classified into low, medium and high resistances. Low resistances include all resistors of the order of 1 ohm and under, while all the resistances of the order of 1 ohm to 0.1 mega ohm are classified as medium resistances. Then finally we have high resistances which are of the order of 0.1 mega ohm and higher. Keep in mind that these classifications are not rigid but forms a guide as to the method of measurement to be adopted in any particular case. That is, the method for measurement of low resistances may be different from methods used for measurement of medium resistances. Similarly, the measurement of high resistances may have different techniques. We will study each of these methods in detail in the next videos.
Now before ending the lecture, let us quickly recall what we have studied in high school about resistor color codes. Remember that standard resistances are marked with color code bands that denote the resistance value. There are three types of color codes. One with four bands, one with five bands and one with six bands. These resistor color code markings are read one band at a time starting from left to right with the larger width tolerance band oriented to the right side indicating its tolerance. Now we have an internationally accepted color chart to identify which number corresponds to each color. By matching the color of the first band with its associated number in the color chart, the first digit is identified and this represents the first digit of resistance value. Again, matching the color of the second band with its associated number in the color chart, we get the second digit of resistance value and so on. Uh, let's try to find the resistance values in these figures. Let's start with the first case. Here, the tolerance band, that is, the band with the most width is oriented to right. So, we can now start reading from left to right. In the case of four bands, the first two bands are first and second digit of the resistance value, the third band is the multiplier and the fourth is tolerance. Here, the first band is yellow, so from the color chart, yellow corresponds to four. Therefore, we have four. The second band is violet and from the color chart, violet corresponds to seven. Therefore, we have 7. The third is the multiplier and it is red and from the color chart, red corresponds to 10 raised to 2. Therefore, we have into 10 raised to 2. Now, the fourth tolerance band is silver and silver corresponds to plus or minus 10% tolerance. Therefore, we have plus or minus 10%. So, the resistance value of this resistor is 4700 ohm plus or minus 10 percentage. Now let us look at the 5 band case. Here the first three bands are digits of resistance value, the fourth band represents multiplier and the fifth band tolerance. So proceeding as before, for blue we have 6, for grey we have 8, for black we have 0, then the fourth multiplier band which is red we have 10 raised to 2 and finally the tolerance band is gold which has plus or minus 5 percent. Therefore the resistance value is 68 kilo ohm plus or minus 5 percentage. Next in the case of 6 bands the additional 6th band represents temperature coefficient which is expressed in parts per million per degree celsius. So the resistance in this case is we have green which corresponds to 5, then we have blue which corresponds to 6, then we have black which corresponds to 0, then we have the multiplier which is orange which is 10 raised to 3, then we have the tolerance which is violet which is plus or minus 0.1 percent plus or minus 0.1 percent and finally the temperature coefficient which is red and is 50 parts per million therefore we have 50 ppm per degree celsius so the resistance value in this case is 560 kilo ohm plus or minus 0.1 percentage with temperature coefficient of 50 parts per million per degree celsius. Now to help memorize the sequence of colors in the color chart several mnemonics were created. Here are two of them. You can study the one which suits you better. So that's all for this lecture. To summarize we have seen the definition of resistance and saw the qualities of a good resistor. Then we saw the color coding of resistors and how to obtain the resistance value from them. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask them in the comments so that either me or some other viewer can help you. Also, if you found the lecture useful, please like the video and also support us by subscribing to the channel. In the next video, we will see the different methods to measure resistances. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.